basketball wives, LA star Sunday Carter. Sunday, how you doing? I'm amazing. How are you? Fine, fine. Um, I've been hearing a lot of news uh, about stuff that's going on, but before we get to that, I want to ask you some other stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the stuff that came from our Twitter fans and our Twitter followers and our Facebook uh, uh, people on Facebook, uh, which is all of our social media is about a million plus. Uh, one question was, what have you been doing since the last season? Um, basically I've been doing a lot of humanitarian work. Um, I, I've always done it and I've continued to do that. Uh, I've been working on a few, uh, projects, you know, I have a couple things coming out, you know, down the pipeline in, uh, spring 2015. So look forward to that on the acting side though. So, you know, I'm trying to transition back into, you know, my roots, which that's where I started from. I started acting uh, before I even did reality TV. I've done uh, at least 11 movies. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You have your sad card and all that stuff? Absolutely, you have to. Okay, all right, all right. Um, just to ask about one of the other um, members on the show, um, there's some science, some rumors going around saying that uh, British was fired. Is that true, or do you know? I have no clue um, about what's going on with British. Absolutely no clue. Okay, okay. Yeah, because it seems to be on the net that she either left the show. Um, I had a couple of sources that they have a couple of interviews from her, so I was just asking. Um, this also says uh, one of the questions from um, our reality reality show department says um, you seem to fall out with two of the people from Basketball Wives, and then we're divided last season. Do you feel that life or your bluntness and your feelings played a hand in that division? Do I? I'm sorry. Do I feel like what played a hand in it? Uh, you being blunt and and your feelings on a specific matter, I guess. Um, And the falling out, you know, the the thing is when you deal with reality TV, and I tell this to people all the time, it's Mm -hmm. all about the editing. So me, yes, I am very blunt. Yes, I am very upfront. Yes, I am very, you know, brutally honest. But at the same time, you know, of course, I have to be in a conversation to even be brutally honest. I'm just not going to come out and burst out and say something, you know, you know, I was either provoked or I was already in, 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 in mid-conversation. So if that part of the conversation wasn't shown and it just shows me, you know, in a negative light, then that's what the people see. So it's really like perception exceeds reality, that type of thing. So what you see is not realistically always what you get. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. Back to editing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <But> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, editors. <laughs> uh, also, another question is, have you and Drea spoke since last season? No. Okay. All right. That's fair. Uh, uh, how, are, <laughs> how are things um, going between, I guess, Malaysia and you? Uh, there's nothing between us at all whatsoever. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, as far as your experience with basketball wise, um, if you had to list like two pros and two cons, what what would they be? Um, let's go with the cons first. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the cons would would for one, um one con would definitely be um my loyalty factor, um, I, I'm very loyal, and, you know, sometimes you're loyal to people that aren't loyal to you. Mm-hmm. Um, that that would definitely be a con. So um, another con for me would probably be to kind of be, I, want, well, I wouldn't say more observant because I'm very observant, but but to, to kind of be more careful around, you know, your your castmates and that sort of thing because, you know, it, it, it's, it's a dangerous world, you know, and I don't mean it physically. I mean, you know, it, it's very dangerous. It's very catty. It's very, um, you know, it can, it can it can almost compromise you in, in certain situations. 
and and sometimes it realistically does. So those those would be the cons. But the pros, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. And I never looked at, you know, the TV show as my job, which was a blessing. You know, it wasn't like I got up and I had to go to a nine-to-five job and I, you know, was sluggish. And, it, you know, I look forward to getting up and doing exactly what it was that I was doing at the oh, time. Oh, yeah, so if you love what you do, it's, it's a career then, I it's, guess. Exactly, it, it's a career, you know. And then another pro for me, it was something new. It was something out of the box because I had opened up my life. And... um I wanted people to see me for who Sunday was, even though it came off negative. I'm not that person. And, you know, it's a shame that I wasn't able to, you know, get, you know, an opportunity to kind of project, you know, the positive. You know, I feed the homeless. You know, I, I've, I've sent two girls on their prom, you know, we give away uh, free clothes uh, down at the at the uh, shelters. It's on Skid Row. I take my children down there. Um, you know, I, I do these sipping shops. I have a My Heart Foundation for my son uh, who had open heart surgery at the age of one. So I would do these sipping shops, which would raise money for, you know, the different causes, for the different causes of uh, heart disease and heart failure, and the money would go directly to whichever particular hospital I would do the sipping shop in, you know, in that city, in that particular city. So it also gave, you know, urban businesses brand visibility, you know, as far as media, as far as you know, clientele as far as, you know, it, it, I give really, really great events. So, you know, that's, you know, for me, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah, because it seems like the, throughout the season, at least last year, like it was one of the next questions I don't really want to ask a certain way, um, but it says about mm-hmm. the uh, all the backlash that came with the fighting with Dre and being called an mm-hmm. instigator. Like, how do you feel mm-hmm. with the backlash from the fans? And I'm like... Uh, well, you know, the thing, I'll answer that question. Okay. You know, you're always going to get backlash when you're chosen. And I feel like I am a chosen person. Like, God has my back. And, you know, again, I just, time and time again, I just continuously in all of my interviews, I go back to the great ones. Every great person that I know that's been successful had been ridiculed. They had been, you know, defamed or had has been trashed, you know what I mean? So I don't really get it. At first it was a little weird for me because I wasn't used to that part of it. I was used to the positive, the positive side because of me being, you know, an actress first. But then, you know, going into reality TV and you opening your world and people, you know, they see you like this and this like, then of course you're going to form your opinion. So if you hate me, you hate me. But I just, you know, I embrace it because the people that hate me are the people that are watching. The people that are hate that hate me are the people that are commenting. The people that hate me are the people that are giving me ratings. The people that hate me are the people that keep me relevant. So if I didn't have those haters and I didn't have people talking about me, who would Sunday Carter really be? Yeah, yeah, I get you. I guess everybody needs a fan base, whether it be good or bad. You know what I mean? Exactly, you know, exactly. Everybody can't love you, but as long as they come in. Everybody can love you, exactly. And I don't want everybody's love. That's the thing about <laughs> I don't want every, And I don't want everybody's prayers either. I don't want everybody. Certain people, I just don't want praying for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pray for yourself first. So. But uh, it, it says something here, too. I have another one. This came from online. It said, how did your family feel about the backlash from the show? You know, my family is very supportive, and we take everything with a grain of salt. Like, we're like stand-up soldiers over here, so it takes a lot for us to, you know, fall down at the knees and, you know, those boulders to get thrown and for us to get all into our feelings. So they were very supportive. My children, um, they're at impressionable ages, but they don't watch the show. Of course, they have, you know, social media, and people will say disrespectful things or whatever, but... You know, I just, you know, I had explained prior to doing the show that these are some of the things that may occur. I don't know, but I'll pre-warn them. 
So, you know, they were very well prepared. And, you know, they, we just delete and block. That's all we do, you know. <laughs> at first I would, so I would, at first I was going in and I'm, you know, I found myself arguing with fans. And I'm like, I'm arguing with somebody behind the computer that I don't even know what this person looks like. They don't know me. All they know is what they see on television. Why am I doing this? Why am I wasting my time? So I, I just had to eliminate it, you know. But when it comes to my children, if you disrespect them, you disrespect me. Then then it's no holds barred. You know, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to say exactly what it is and how I feel. And I really don't care who says what. And, you know, I'll, I'll just go there. You know, I'll go from zero to 100 very, very quick when it comes yeah. to my children. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, it's of course, any good mother would. Um, of course. I, I see another question that came from our reality department, and they're basically asking, you know, because we all know that, you know, you're leaving the show. Um, can right. You, can you tell us why that decision came about and what's happening with well, that? Well, you know, um, I'm officially still under contract with Basketball Wives LA, but I just feel like once the contract is up, I just – want to go in a different direction. I want to do my own thing. I want to jump back into my acting career. And it's very hard to transform and morph back into who Sunday Carter really is as opposed to being the Sunday Carter from Basketball Wives LA, which is the backlash and which is, you know, the negative person. And like I said, again, that's not who I am. I'm far from that person. You know, to get to know me is to love me, you know. And, um, that's basically what I based my decision off of. It, it wasn't like, oh, you have to go, you're fired, or this, that, you know, this, that, and the third. No, that wasn't. It was, it was a situation where, you know, I just decided, you know, when I got the phone call initially about the schedule and everything, I just really didn't want to move forward. I, 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 it was in my spirit to go in a totally different direction. You know, and that's back to what I really, really love to do, and that's be in front of the camera in a scripted way. Uh, also, there's another question that's really good. Um, before you made that decision, did you actually have a conversation with Jackie, and what was her feelings about you leaving the show? You know, no. I sat down with my with my family, uh, my mother, my father, my sister, and we kind of came together collectively, and we made that decision together that we just didn't feel as though, you know, the show did, you know, benefit me in any kind of way, um, except for the visibility, except for, you know, me being stopped on the streets and, oh, that's Sunny Carter from Basketball Wives and that sort of thing. But I get that anyway because people still know me from the movies that I've done. So with that being said, it's kind of like, a catch-22 and a double-edged, double-edged sword sort of thing. So I didn't speak to, you know, Jackie. I spoke with my with my family, and, you know, we, we definitely decided that, you know, I should, I should go in a different direction. As far as online media, how far, mm-hmm. how far do you think that helps with your fan base and your fans reaching out to you? Um... You know, it's funny with, with, with this social media stuff because you just never, you first of all, you never know. I mean, you get some genuine people and then you get some psychotic people. <laughs> for instance, like I had, no, dead serious, I have one girl that has stalking me for a year. And she, anything that I tweet, she copies and pastes it, then she adds my name, and then everything in my bio is in her bio, and she just she's pretending to be me, but she has, like, 30 followers. So when people, you know, and I blocked her, I muted her, I did everything that I possibly could. So to me, the social media part, I mean, I put pictures up there, and I um, – I represent my brand. I promote my brand. Um, I put my, you know, my daughter up there because my little one, she's a humanitarian as well. <laughs> okay. It's so funny. But um, so I do, I, I, that's basically, if you look at my social media, you'll definitely see a lot of business. It's not real, you know, and you might see some pleasure too. I, I can't even lie. You know, me fooling around or whatever the case is. But, you know, that's what I use it for. I use it for that that purpose alone. And, the fans will come on, they'll say nice things, some will say some disrespectful things, and 
you know, either you want to respond to it or you just want to take the high road and keep it moving. So, like I said, block and delete. 